If you're in the market for an ultra-wide, tack-sharp, full-frame cinema lens, then you're in the right place because the Mikey 16mm T2.5 is an absolutely stunning lens. Now real quick, before I get into this review, I do have a couple other videos about this lens. I have an unboxing video as well as a vlogging test with it, which I'm gonna link down in the description. They're actually on my second channel. Also, if you're not subscribed to that channel, you should go subscribe there as well and check out those videos. But without further ado, this is the Mikey 16 mm T2.5. So let's go ahead and go over the main specs of this lens, then of course I'm going to give you my opinions on it and my thoughts on using this lens. But spoiler alert, this is an absolutely stunning lens. It is tack sharp, like seriously tack sharp. And overall, in my opinion, this is an absolutely fantastic lens. So this lens comes in the following mounts, PL, EF, RF, E and L mount. So with any of those given mounts, this should either work with whatever camera you have or at least be able to be adapted to the camera you have. And this also covers full frame, so this lens will essentially work with most mirrorless cameras, DSLRs, or even cinema cameras. However, make sure it does have the correct mount for the camera you want to use it with. It has an 86 millimeter filter thread, which is a little bit bigger than most standard lenses, typically the biggest photo lenses. Um, and around 82 millimeters. So if you don't have 86 millimeter or larger, you know, ND filters or polarizing filters or anything like that, you will need to buy new filters for this lens. This lens has a 45 millimeter image circle, which like I said, will cover anything up to full frame. It has a 330 degree focus throw. It weighs somewhere between 812 and 890 grams, depending on what lens mount you have. This lens has 10 aperture blades, so it has a very round, smooth bokeh. It has a 90 millimeter outer diameter for matte boxes. There's 16 glass elements in 11 groups. This lens has a full metal construction, and I mean full metal, like there's not a single piece of plastic on this entire lens it doesn't look like. 100% metal and glass, which is amazing. It has 0.8 millimeter standard follow focus gears on both the focus ring and the aperture ring. And lastly, it comes with both front and rear caps. The front cap is a slip-on cap, which just pressure fits on there. It feels really, really nice. And even though it's pressure fitted, it won't fall off pretty much no matter what. I mean, I can shake this as much as I want, and that cap isn't coming off unless I tug it off right there. Oh, and one thing I almost forgot, it also comes with a lens support bracket that can screw on here, but it can also be removable, because um, you can see I have it removed right now. Now, in my unboxing video, which I'll link in the description, you'll see everything that's included with this. I believe it came with a uh, microfiber wipe as well, um, and possibly a few other things, so go watch that unboxing video if you want to see literally everything that comes in the box. And so that's pretty much it for the main specs of this lens, and now let's get into my thoughts on this lens. Uh, mostly really good thoughts, however there are a few issues that I'm going to mention as well. So first of all, I've already mentioned this, the build quality of this lens is absolutely fantastic. It's fully made out of metal, there's very little play with anything in this lens. The aperture and focus gears move very, very smooth. I mean, they honestly feel amazing, better than any other cinema lens that I've personally used. And there's something else I already brought up in the beginning. This lens is tack sharp. Like, I mean clinical sharp. If you've ever used a Sigma art lens before, it reminds me of that with just how sharp it is and just, the images just pop. Something with the sharpness, maybe the micro contrast, that just makes the footage coming out of this lens look absolutely stunning. And speaking of the image quality, the close focus distance on this lens is also very good, especially for an ultra wide angle lens. You can get really close up to an object and it gives a really unique look. You know, typically with macro lenses, when you get really close up, it's more of a zoomed in focal length, you know, somewhere between 50, maybe even 100 millimeters. And it's just another good thing about this lens that it has such a close focus distance. Now, something else I want to mention, just in case it affects you like it did to me. But I said earlier, this has an 86 millimeter filter thread, which is kind of a weird size. Not many photo lenses are typically that big of a filter thread. And personally, the biggest ND filter I have is an 82 millimeter. So I ended up actually purchasing an 86 millimeter to 82 millimeter step down ring. And with that step down ring and the ND filter on it, I noticed in full frame on my a7S III, there was a tiny, like just a tiny amount of vignetting in the corners. However, with active stabilization on, or with an APS-C sized camera, you can definitely get away with an 86 to 82 millimeter step down ring. 
I don't know if I'd go as low as an 86 to 77 millimeter step down ring. Maybe on an APS-C camera that would work. But if you have a full frame camera, I would recommend purchasing just the standard 86 millimeter ND filter for this, even though it will be a bit pricey. And now speaking of prices, this is definitely not a budget friendly lens by any means. It does cost $1,200. So in the cinema lens world, this is technically a really budget cinema lens. I mean, when you move up to the highest end cinema lenses, you don't even want to know the prices on those. Like it literally gets ridiculous. So while technically this is a budget cinema lens, $1,200 still isn't cheap for one lens by any means. But let's get into a few of the small quirks that I noticed with this lens. So first of all, in full frame, it does have some vignetting between T2.5 and T2.8. However, it pretty much completely goes away once you get to T4. So keep that in mind, it's not a super large amount of vignetting, however, it is noticeable until you get to T4. Then also I mentioned it has a 330 degree focus throw. This isn't really a good or a bad thing, this is really based off preference. And personally, when I'm pulling focus with this with my hand, I find it pretty cumbersome to go from one end to the other by hand. You know, I'm gonna go ahead and do it right now. Right now I'm at the closest focus distance and I'm gonna go all the way to infinity and I'll show you kind of what I mean. All right, let's go to focus and here we go. So it's at close focus, now let's go to infinity. There we go. So that took three, you know, turns with the hand like that, which if you do that while filming, you're gonna notice that, you know, start, stop, start, stop, start, stop while pulling focus. And unless you have like an electronic wireless follow focus, using your hand or even like a manual follow focus like this one right here, it's gonna take a lot of doing this to get all the way from close to infinity focus if that's what you need to do. Which again, that's not really an issue. It's mostly just based off personal preference and you know, how you pull focus personally. And lastly, this is kind of basing off of that in a way, but this lens is fully manual. There are no electronic contacts no autofocus, no stabilization, uh, no electronic aperture, anything like that. Everything you do with this lens will be manual, so keep that in mind. You know, there's not a way to just switch to autofocus when you don't feel like manually focusing or anything like that. This lens is 100% of the time gonna be fully manual. And so that is pretty much the rundown on the Mikey 16 millimeter T2.5 full frame cinema lens. Like I said, I have a few other videos about this lens if you wanna learn some more about it and see some more examples with it. Check those out down in the description. But if you enjoyed this video, please consider leaving a comment, liking this video and subscribing. It'll really help my channel out and help push this video to new audiences. But that's it for me. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next video.